Welcome back to Combustion Junction. I am Steve. Behind me is the Honda CB360T Scrambler Project. And today we continue on with some of the custom stuff for the bike. I'm looking at putting a longer swing arm on the back. I have a cool brake pedal upgrade that I think is gonna look pretty good on the bike. And, and the last thing for today is I'm actually dying to hear what that new custom Scrambler exhaust I made sounds like. So, if all else goes well, we'll throw a battery on it, give it a couple of kicks, and hopefully we hear what it sounds like. before I'm getting pretty close to finishing all the custom stuff on the bike I'm pretty much I'm about 80% positive that I'm gonna go with powder coating for this which means I'm gonna strip the whole thing down anyway there's just a couple of last little things that I sort of want to look at before the whole thing gets torn down so you may remember a while back uh, one of the viewers Dave Rice sort of hooked me up with uh, a few bits and bobs on the bike, what was right, what was wrong, sent me a video of his. He's been since sending me, you know, documentation on upgrades that the bike has gotten, whether it was like, you know, like factory recalls or whatever else. And I'm gonna dedicate a whole ep episode to the engine when that comes up. But he knows, and, and if you've been watching this, you know that I have a CJ360 parts bike. I should say I had a CJ360 parts bike. What I have now is a whole bunch of CJ360 parts in bins. One of the things in our conversation, and this was a while ago, one of the things in our conversation he mentioned just out of the blue, he was just like, hey, I know you got the CJ stuff. Um, you should check out the rear swing arm on it because it's a little bit longer than what comes on the bike. And he was right. This is the CJ swing arm. It's actually in pretty good shape. There's, there's surface rust. The bike was pretty much toasted anyway, but it's, it's very solid. Uh, a proper cleanup and everything would, would do it well. And it's basically almost identical. It, it should, I haven't tried it. It should bolt right into the frame. Um, and it seems to be on measurement. I'm gonna pull the other one out. I'm gonna put two of them next to each other, but it seems like it's almost uh, an exact swap save for uh, the rear end stuff. Let's do a side-by-side -side compare to these, fix whatever we need to on this, and then we'll mock up what uh, sort of the stance will be afterwards. Also wanted to point out that I've got a nice swanky new top for my uh, bike lift and uh, gave a little bit of a paint. It was killing me how much, how the oil stains and everything were just digging into the wood and everything. So I decided to splurge out and uh, this is just raw metal diamond pattern. Uh, I'll get some paint on it, but I think it just, it, uh, just a much cleaner and nicer surface to work on. sitting next to each other. Uh, the one up on top is the CJ uh, swing arm, and this one is the CB one that I just uh, took off the bike. So, similarities, if you if you basically look at here, up, um, you know, the grease point's in the same place, it's the exact same structure, it's the exact same width. It seems that the mounting for the chain guard is slightly different. Um, not that that really concerns me. And then as you work your way down, the lower rod that uh, holds the brake drum in place are exactly the same. And the rear shock mounts seem to be ex in the exact same place. The big difference you see is A, this act obviously comes out much further. The, the oval is offset from this one. This has a little bit of a divot that's cut out here. And then this one's open. Uh, so it has a different, 
It has a different uh, chain uh, tensioning adjustment than this one did. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to uh, adjust this to look a little bit more like this. So I have this opening so I can use the CB hardware. And then let's get that popped on and uh, see how it does with the profile. And that's the two of them sitting together right now. You can see uh, the profile is pretty close. I can do some refining if I wanted, but for now I just wanted to uh, be able to mock it up and see. You can see this end there at the same. And that's how much further back that swing arm is. So let's get it on. You can see, if I can show you right there, this guy, uh, which I think has something to do with the brakes, is just touching that bolt a little bit. Uh, I don't even know if the swing arm is going to have to go down that low, but that seems to be the only thing that's really getting in my way right now. So that's pretty much the after. Um, I don't have the shock on there right now because it was just kind of hanging loose, but it's about an inch higher than it was. Like I said before, you know, before it was like my fingers were, were jammed and now I've got a little bit of movement there. And it also actually gives me a lot more options on what I'm gonna do with the back here. I've got a couple of different ideas on that. I'll, uh, we'll get to that later. I think with knobby tires, it's gonna look sweet. Next thing I wanted to address concerning uh, the CB versus the CJ is the rear brake pedal. This bike originally had the twin exhausts coming down the side and, and for that reason this brake pedal was designed accordingly. Even to the fact that in right here there's actually a notch that's cut out to get around the exhaust. Now. Uh, the two exhausts that I have designed for this bike, the first being the two into one, wouldn't even work on this because that two into one collector completely gets in the way with this, which is what originally gave me the idea for going in this direction. So that pretty much dismissed this anyway. Now that I have the scrambler pipes on the other side, this just, it's just in the way and ugly. And it's clearly, um, the lowest hanging point of the bike right now, like by inches, right? It comes way down here. So let's get this off and let's look at the brake pedal that came on the CJ. So this is the CJ brake pedal. You can see they start at the, the same pivot point and if I make them end at the same pedal point, you can clearly see that this one would not be designed to loop around underneath the exhaust. So already, it's got advantages. It can use the same mounting hole on the frame, except the tube for the CJ360 is quite a bit longer. It sticks out this much more than on my bike. So although I can get everything in, a lot more of a cleaner line than the other one. There is, a adjustable pedal stuff here, which just seems to come up and hit this foot peg. So um, let me grab the CJ foot pegs and see if there's a difference. So 
So the CJ uh, seems to be about the same. It's a little, it's just a hair higher. I'm not, I'm not completely sure of that, but I know that it comes out a little bit more. And now that adjustable stop screw now hits on a plate on the bottom of that foot peg. So I've got some choices. I can, the, the, the mounting point is exactly the same. My only obstacle is that bit of a gap right there. You can see I can move it in and out. So what I think I'm gonna do is just cut this little uh, piece off of here and just use it as a shim. I don't even think I'm gonna bother welding it. I think once it's all in and locked together, um, you know, there's plenty holding it strong. It just doesn't, it just doesn't wanna go back and forth like this. So I think I'll just use it as a spacer rather than uh, a, a welded on frame bit. A little bit of good news, a little bit of bad news. Uh, the bad news is that uh, I don't think I'm gonna get the bike to run today. I, I was trying to sort of uh, do a quick little wiring job, just get battery to uh, the condensers just to get a spark going and I don't think, I think my points that were acting up before are acting up again and, I'm, and, and it's not something I wanted to dive into. It was something I just wanted to, to have a little quickie uh, start to see if it was gonna work. So uh, because of that, because I am gonna order new points anyway, I'm just not gonna go there and, and just save myself probably a couple hours of aggravation. But the good news is that something really unexpectedly showed up in the mail. I ordered this yesterday from the US and it got here in less than 24 hours. Good on you, four into one. I think I dig it. I think I do. I'm, I'm a little um, distracted because of the new height right now, but I definitely really like the shocks, and I think I still ultimately have to decide what's going on back here, but I really think the bike now really needs uh, maybe like a small sort of finishing bit on the back. Anyway guys, I think I'm gonna leave it there. Let me know what you think of the new height adjustment with the shocks and stuff. I'm, I'm not completely there. I think I've gotten so used to seeing the profile of the bike where it was that now with the new height, with the new shocks, I, I'm, it's catching me off guard in a weird kind of way. That being said, I still have to get the, the rear lenses on it, I have to get the number plate, and possibly a small rear fender, which is gonna make a huge amount of difference in the final look. But that being said, if you are new to the channel and you haven't subscribed, please do so. I aim to post weekly. Uh, hit that notification bell if you would like to stay up to date. Hit that like button if you like this video or the build series or anything else. Share this video video or the series with somebody you think may enjoy it and as always we will talk to you next week guys uh take care ride safe stay warm cheers